So when we received the letter threatening to take the house, we didn't panic. We just increased the prayer. Hello, I'm Kenneth Copeland. Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Pastor George is here expounding the book of Mark and <laughs> faith and faith. Luke and <laughs> everything else. Hallelujah. <laughs> Today we're talking about bulldog faith. We're talking about bulldog faith. We've been talking about, <laughs> we've been talking about bulldog faith for these last two weeks. First of all, I just want to say thank you once again well, thank for inviting you. me to come and be a part of this with you. You may come anytime, George. All right. We well, I'll, I'll your, take you up on that. You do marvelous <laughs> research, and we well, thank you for sharing. And I, I appreciate everything that you and Kenneth have put into me and still do and put into our family and the body of Christ. Thank you, George. And you, you have caused us to stand strong in faith and believe God. For, and, uh, for a Yankee, you've really, <laughs> you've really worked out. I really worked out, yeah, didn't you I? Yeah, I'm telling you. There you go. And I, I can say y'all and it just comes naturally <laughs> it, now. It sounds right. Sounds right. You got well, the hang of it. We started out and I said to you, Gloria, you just can't, you just can't exhaust the subject of prosperity. And you said, Let's try. We're still trying. Aren't so we are pressing Hallelujah. in. And the Lord just led us to do this series on bulldog faith. And that came from a time when I was struggling in particular with, uh, we sold a house and then we moved to an apartment. Then we moved to another rent house and all in one year. And it was just really, really difficult. And the rent house that we had, had a faulty septic system. The fumes were going throughout the house. It was so bad they moved in with me. We for a did, while. and we evacuated the house <laughs> on a Saturday night, and and they were out of town. Came home, and there are three little bears, <laughs> three bears <laughs> that were at the house. And we, I'll tell you, we um, we were there with you for six weeks. Now, where which house. house was that? That was. Uh... That's the, that's the latest house. That's the new oh, house. the new house. So we were there with you for that time, and then the Lord got us into another house. And, and the finality of that is we, we finally moved into the house that we were renovating. We did it with cash. It's debt-free, and it's a beautiful home. Well, let me ask you, was it worth it? It was worth a debt-free house. It was worth every confession we made. It was worth every stand of faith that we took. It, it was worth every moment of operating in an aggressive faith because, it, and I shared with you before that it was at that little desk in the guest room that we were staying in that I was so frustrated. And I sat there and the Lord said to me, I want you to get aggressive about your faith. Aggressive. He said, I want you to get up and over this lame attitude that you have. Right? I'm serious. He had a, <laughs> it, it, was like a it was like a, it was like a football team halftime locker room chewing out by the coach. Yeah. And so I sat down at that desk and Gloria, I took the little notepad that you had. And this is a copy of it with a, there's a B, a little B on there. And I started writing down what, what became, what has become this, this series. Now this happened, this was 2002 that all that took place. But these are all the things that the Lord talked to me about that, that bulldog faith. He said, I want you to get aggressive about your faith. I want you to develop a bulldog faith. He said, the nature of faith is aggressive. And he said, you need to be aggressive about it. Yeah. He said, you need to be determined about your faith. You need to be persistent, tenacious persistent about it. You stay with it. You stay on top of it. He said that, that bulldog faith uh, makes demands and commands. That bulldog faith is focused on the Word of God. It's fully persuaded that what God has told us we can do, we can do. And these are all the things that we've covered. If you haven't been watching, you can go back online. All of these notes are available to you right now, as well as the broadcast, kcm.org, and you can watch them again and again and study them. And it took me, it took me through a uh, a, a training with the Lord about how to walk in this determined bulldog faith. And today, Gloria, on this last day, this day 10, we are talking about something that you have been so eloquent in sharing and teaching with us in, and that is, it's the faith that takes. That's right. That's it's the right. faith that takes. Faith takes it. Faith takes it. And there are times when I have Gloria's voice echoing in my mind. I can hear her saying it, faith 
takes it, right. take it, just take it. And there is a spiritual operation of a laying hold of something mm -hmm. in the realm of the spirit and taking it out and bringing it into the natural realm. And that takes an aggressiveness. It does. That takes, because not everybody does that. Not every, and and not, I'll repeat this part not yeah. where I got that. Uh, believe you receive when you pray is mm -hmm. what we learned about faith. Mm -hmm. That was a key to our walking by faith. Yeah. Take it when you pray. That's yep. what that word receive. I saw in the, somewhere in the scripture, mm -hmm. in a book, in a, yep. you know, I've forgotten now how, how yep. it came about it. But in, anyway, the word in the Greek is for receive is take. Yeah. Take it yeah. when you pray. And what I got was that if you don't take it <clears throat> when you pray, if you leave it up, if you leave it out here, you know, I'd like to have a new house. I want this house. I want that house. I believe I, I want that. But if you don't yeah. take it, yeah. receive it. The yeah. word receive, mm -hmm. believe you receive mm -hmm. when you pray, means to it take. It means to take. And if you don't take it, in other words, when I pray over something like that, it's a done deal. I have it. From that time on, That's right. I thank the Lord for it. I, I give Him praise for it. I don't just forget about it, but I don't take it again because I've already taken it. That's a real development of our faith to develop, well, to develop the eye of faith and to be able to see things that don't exist in the natural, but yeah. see them. And you're saying the same thing with taking it. When you, you take it, when you pray, you have it. It's yours. It becomes more real to you. It's based on the word, like you're it is. healing. Well, it's based on this scripture right here. It's Mark 11:22. Mm -hmm. Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in have God. Faith. Have so faith. It's not optional. Mm -mm. Have faith or, or you, you have the God kind of faith. That's right. I learned that at a very early age when I first came here, <laughs> taking the God kind of yeah. faith. We were, we were um, at a, a gathering one time with Brother Copeland and there were various speakers that were talking and it was a very, they were talking about some serious subjects and the more the people talked, it seemed like the heavier everything got. Brother Copeland was the last speaker. He was doing the, the final, uh, I, they call it the benediction. Mm -hmm. He got up there and he said, there's one thing we all need to remember, have faith, faith in, in God. God. And Gloria, it lifted the entire <laughs> atmosphere. It That's just what, turned it around. Have faith in in God, and I can hear his voice right now. I really, I, re I need to get, I need to get his yeah, voice for my phone that when it rings, it goes, have faith in God. That's good, George. <laughs> and that's what this scripture says. Have faith in God. No matter what you're going through, have faith in God. No matter what it looks like, have faith in God. No matter how big it might seem, have faith in God. It's an action word. It's an have action it. word. Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed yes. and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he Amen. says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever things. you desire, things. when you pray, believe that you receive, receive them. them and you shall have them. Take them when you pray. You know how people do? They'll pray if they don't have revelation. Yeah. That. They'll yeah. pray around the world. <laughs> about something and not ever take it. Oh, that's so true. That's I've not heard key, that phrase, but the they'll pray thing. around the world yeah. and they'll not take it. This sounds spiritual and good, yeah. but it's not. You didn't yeah. take it. You just take it. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, faith is an aggressive force. It really is. It's an aggressive force that be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Yep. It is not passive, retreating. It does not go backward. And when it says here, believe that you receive them and you shall have them in the Greek, and this is what you've taught us, in the Greek, that word believe or receive rather means to take with much force, to, to seize with, with a force. grip that yeah, cannot be shaken good. off. That's on your notes on number three, like A3. That. To seize with much force. Take it with much force. This is not for wimps. That's right. Faith is not, true faith is not for wimps. No. But you take it with much force. In other words, you have to have something behind that. 
yeah. those words. Yeah. And it's the word of God. It's the word of God. It's your words yeah. that make it work. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So you have to take it. You have to take your healing. Right. You have to take your finances. You have to take it with much Amen. force. The kingdom of heaven, Matthew says, suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Right. So we are forceful in that. We are not wimpy. We are not backward. We are not soft not about bashful. this. We are not bashful We're in bold. it. We're bold. We're bold. That's what it is. It's a boldness of faith. Because and, we can be bold because we have the word. Yeah, it's on. backing us. Yeah. He, he really does back us in this. And in the Greek, it also says to seize it with a grip that cannot be shaken off. Now that is a perfect description mm -hmm. of a bulldog. That's good. <laughs> that bulldog that's, that's will take right. whatever, a bone, and bite down on it and will seize it with a grip that you cannot shake it you off. You just see that little pug nose thing going. Rrr, rrr. We had a dog one time. A do <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. Rrr, it's a bulldog. <laughs> 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 So you can see him. You can see him. He's Michael. ugly, but he works. He works. <laughs> he works. We had one time we had a standard poodle, and it's it sat about that tall, and Jeremy Jeremy used to say he was a teenager at the time, and he'd say, Hank, give me a hug, and the dog would literally put his paws on Jeremy's shoulders and put his head <laughs> on him That's like true. that, and Hank, but Hank, we <laughs> at the time we lived near Milan, Lefevre. And Mylan had a name for Hank because sometimes Hank would get out of the backyard and sit, sit on the front porch. And, and on off, Mylan's front porch? On our front porch. And Mylan would drive by our house and see Hank. And Hank would have, sometimes we took Hank to the, the vet to have him groomed and he, they put a bandana around him. And Mylan <laughs> would drive by and Hank would be sitting on the front porch and he'd say, there's Hank the hippie dog. <laughs> Hank the hippie <laughs> Hank dog. The, Hank the That's hippie dog. Funny. That's but funny. Hank, all that to say, we, Hank would get something like a bone or something like that and we'd play with him and try to get it out of his mouth and we'd yank it this way and yank it that way. We'd go up and we'd go down and we could not get that thing. He would bite down on that bone to such a degree That's what we you do couldn't with the pull. Word of God. So what we have to do is we have to, by faith, seize the word seize with a grip that cannot be shaken off. Can't we seize our out. healing. We seize our house. We see what, uh, yeah. seize whatever it is that we need and we take it and we will not let go of it until we see it. Amen. That's good, George. That's a good analogy. And there are things that we believe for around here. Well, for instance, the Citation 10. Yeah. And, and it was a number of years that we were believing for the manifestation of that aircraft. But what did we do? We bit down on the Word of God and would not shake loose. That's, that's something about Brother Copeland. He has that he, he just has that <laughs> bulldog-like faith that will not quit That's and right. will it's not let faith. go. It's a bold faith. Yeah. It's a very bold faith. And it's a faith that takes. And I put a phrase down here that what God has so wonderfully given to us by His grace, we forcefully take it with our faith. That's right. Because there's an enemy out there trying to take it back from us. So what are we supposed to do with that enemy? Resist him. Resist him. It didn't say he'd roll him. over and play dead. It <clears throat> says resist him. Yep. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, resist we resist him. him. And right. there's an illustration that I've done in church sometimes. Sometimes I've taken my Bible and I'll say, this is the word of God. It belongs to me. And I'll go up to somebody and they'll try to take it from me. So try to take my Bible from me. And I, I will not let go. That's right. That's what now, what, what, what wimpy faith will do is, is the devil try to take it and he takes it away. And then they complain. And they complain. But, but <laughs> it didn't work. But we have, have to, to take it. the word, yeah. bite down on it like a bulldog does and That's not called. let go of it. Resist. We resist. Yeah, we resist it. We resist the enemy from taking our faith or talking us out of it or call it, <clears throat> right. causing us to right. say the opposite of what we want to come to pass. We have what we say. Yeah. That, you just might as well get a grip on that. Good yeah. or we, bad, <laughs> you're getting that's right. what You're going to get you what say. you say. That's right. And so we have to that's hold right. on to what we see in the Word of God and what we believed that's for, right. what we stood on, yep. and not let it go. Brother Copeland was, was preaching recently and he had us lay our hands on our heads and calling for hair. Yes, yes, <laughs> amen. So we made a faith to men to take the original, the original I count. I agree with you too. There's a scripture here in Joshua 18 talking about taking what belongs to us. Mm. 
In Joshua 18. What a scripture, George. And I'll read this to you, Gloria. It says, the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up a tabernacle of the congregation there. The land was subdued before them. That land was already conquered. It already belonged to them. But in verse two, it says, and there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not received or had not taken their inheritance. I don't have that page. That's, I'm just reading, I'm reading oh, this scripture because okay, we're reading. like four minutes okay. now left in this broadcast. <clears throat> so I'm hurrying along. But they had not received it, Glory. They had not taken what rightfully belonged to them. Mm-hmm. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, how long are you slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given to you. And I say that to you today. How long are you going to be slack to take what already belongs to you, to take hold of that? What you see in the Word of God. That's right. And the word slack, now I have that on B number two there. Slack in the Hebrew means how long are you going to postpone it? How long are you going to put it off? How long are you going to waste time? And the message translation says, how long are you going to sit around on your hands putting off taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has already given to you? Do you know some people can just pray around the world and back and never take it? Never take it. So it's a good thing to do based on this scripture that when you pray... You, you think about it, maybe before you leave your place, place of prayer, did I take what I wanted to come to pass? That's right. Did I take, did I take it, it or talk about it? <laughs> did I take That's it good, or Gloria. talk about it? Did I take it or did I just talk about it? That's it's, really it's, good. It's important. It's That's the important. difference between That's working important. and not working. That's Glory it. To God. We have to take it. We, we have it. It belongs to us. There, we believe we receive it. There are a couple of scriptures that, for instance, he's already blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's Ephesians yeah. 1, 3. It already yeah. belongs to yeah. us. It's ours. And so the, the word possess here uh, in, he, in Joshua 1, uh, 18, 3, when it says, why are you slack to possess the land? That word possess, and I have that on page 3, that word possess in the Hebrew means to claim. Claim it. Claim it. So what we're talking about here is bulldog faith takes it. Bulldog faith claims it. I lay claim on what I need. I take that. I wrote down in the notes here uh, a word from Brother Copeland in October 28th of 2010. For all of you who will take my word and stand on it, saith the Lord, the kingdom is for you. The angels are for you. And all of heaven's reserves are at your call. You have to take it. We have to claim what we need. And in this last, in this last two minutes <laughs> that we have left, Gloria, together, look on page two there of your, of your notes. I wrote something down here. This is a bulldog confession. I want us to do it together. Okay, I'll do it okay? after you. Say this after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. I give it first place and final authority. I give it first place and final authority. I am walking in bulldog faith. I am walking in bulldog faith. More and more every day. More and more every day. The devil will not stop me. The devil will not stop me. From walking in the fullness of the blessing. From walking in the fullness of the blessing. I refuse to quit. I refuse to quit. I refuse to let go. I refuse to let go. I, I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. My, my faith is aggressive. My faith is aggressive. It's persistent. It's persistent. It's determined. It's determined. It's focused. It's focused. I am fully persuaded. I am fully Fully persuaded. What God has promised. What God has promised. He is able to perform. He is able to perform. I take it. I take it. I possess it. I possess it. I claim it. I claim it. This is the victory. This is the victory. That overcomes the world. That overcomes the world. Even my bulldog faith. Even my bulldog faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, we receive yes, that. We praise you, you for it. And we, we are getting stronger. People. Strong. Go ahead, Gloria. We agree with the people for what they took Yes, by thank faith. you, Jesus. George and I agree with thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That you have it now. Praise In God. In Jesus' name. Thank Hallelujah. you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Good job, George. Gloria, let's get strong in faith. Uh, Take it. I'm doing my best, George. (laughs) We are doing our best. We are doing our best. Hallelujah. And we're not through yet. Mm -mm. We'll be right back. I'm Lewis McCall, and this is my wife, Lenora. 
I learned back in 2002 that God can turn things around. I learned that from reading and watching Gloria Copeland and her ministry when she spoke about 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. And I learned to use that as a fundamental uh, scripture for me on a daily basis. In 2004, I had some investment property that I sold and I gave a large amount of money to my church. I received the first notice of audit in 2006. They went back one year to 2005 questioning my donations. I got married in 2006, so they ended up not only auditing me, but my husband. But not only did we receive the audit notice from one office, we received notices from IRS, Washington, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, Andover, Massachusetts, Kansas City, Kansas, DeKalb, Georgia, and one or two other places. We got caught up in the IRS loop. That began things. And then in successive years after that, of course we were married then, uh, they refused to acknowledge anything that we gave to KCM or other ministries or our church. So it's like they considered us to be untruthful. It was very frustrating, but we kept holding on in faith and praying and declaring every day that we did not owe them, they owed us, and we used 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 because we believed God would turn it around. The easy thing would have been to settle with IRS and say, okay, we agree, and just give in to them. But we knew we hadn't done anything wrong, that there was a paperwork mistake. We would see commercials on TV saying, you got tax problems? We can negotiate it down to a lower amount for you. But uh, Lenora would, would say, we don't owe them, they owe us. And we, we stood our ground. We continued to stand in, in faith. Uh, which is difficult when all of the, uh, uh, the indicators seem to be against you. <laughs> I call KCN Ministries a lot. And so I just said, I'm just going to lay it all out there and put my trust in God's Word and just keep listening to God's Word, reading His Word, and not let anything else cross my eyes. The six offices that audited us said we owed in excess of $40,000 because they can continue to add penalties and interest. and interest. And it was in August of 2011 that we received the, the letter from the IRS saying that they were going to take our house in about 10 days. And that's when we really, really prayed. And then it was February 1st, 2012, we see the letter from IRS saying they're going to send us refunds for several years in excess of $13,000. And then we got another letter saying they need to send us uh, $1,300. And then another letter saying they owed us an additional $500. So I would say it was about $14,000. $15,000 that the IRS gave us. And the remarkable thing is, our tax person said the IRS really does this. The whole time we continued to decree, as Gloria Copeland taught us, decree 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8, and saying every day out loud that we did not owe, that they owed us. And we just stood on the truth. We would not stop tithing. We would not stop giving offerings. And we just believe God. You take God at His word. You, you uh, believe in His character, that He doesn't lie, that He's reliable and trustworthy. So when you are exposed to it and you see what God can do, and you can see things that are literally miracles in front of your eyes, you cannot doubt Him. God is real. Lewis and Lenora took hold of God's oh, promises. Oh, yes. Oh, they yes. They stood on the Word of God for seven years. They would not quit. They did not quit. They did not Praise draw back. Praise God. They took the Word by faith and got their victory. Praise God. Glory to God. That is awesome, Gloria. Hallelujah. That is tremendously awesome. <laughs> We're going to receive the offering <laughs> yeah. on this note of victory <laughs> Yes, today. amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I have a scripture I wanted to share about the offering today, and it's something that Sister Gloria 
told me about, talked to me about, taught me about many years ago. The hundredfold return is working for you That's all the right. time. Now. On your giving right now, Always it's working now. for you. It said, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Now. See, there's now. There's now. And first of all, we want to thank you for yes. all of the giving, oh, all of the yes. supply that you give into this ministry, how blessed we are. And those of you that are giving today, we are so grateful to be yes. able to carry on the work that is happening all over the world, from the top to the bottom, all the way around. God. And Gloria and I are in agreement with you today that the hundredfold return is working for you yes. right now. I'm believing for that myself. It's happening right now. It's happening Hundredfold right return. Yes. And it can happen. It happens in spite of what's going on around us financially, yeah. in spite of what's happening with the market. The kingdom of God is Not on the, the rise. market dependent. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right. We are, we are dependent on the kingdom of God. That's, right. that's what we stand Amen. on. So we pray over the offerings, Father, yes. of those that are giving yes, today. Lord. And thank you for the hundredfold yes, return that's Lord. working for them right now. We believe for it. We take That's it. right. Thank you, we Jesus. We take healing in the household. Every person be oh, healed you, in Father. Jesus' name. Praise God. We thank you, Lord, thank that you, we Lord. are prosperous. Thank you, we Jesus. are blessed. We increase. We increase. Hallelujah as we stand on the Word of God. Thank you. Praise God. This is Gloria and George, Gloria Copeland, George Pearson's reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Continue to grow in your faith in God. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive your free digital download of today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Believe God to bring new visions, His manifested power, and great change in your life. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. So come together, worship together, and know this, that the greatest is yet to come. The value of prayer is more than you've ever known. And the times of prayer, the times of intercession have come to a place where it's no longer so much of the groaning, but the praising and the shouting for the victory has come. Hallelujah. April 2nd through 4th, Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle welcome you to the 2020 Branson Live Victory Campaign in Branson, Missouri, USA. April 23rd through 25th, join Kenneth Copeland at the 2020 Sacramento Live Victory Campaign in Sacramento, California, USA. May 8th through 9th, Kenneth Copeland returns to Peru for the 2020 Peru Victory Campaign. Location to be announced. May 13th through 16th, Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle welcome you to the 2020 Columbia Believers Convention in Bogota, Colombia. For more information, go to kcm.org events.